really conflicted about putting my life online because I don't want to seem like I'm so full of my life. Less and less, I don't want to appear online, but I also feel like I really want to help people learn about A, expat life, and B, living more in tune with our environment. That doesn't mean not buying things that you need, but just being more attentive towards what you do in fact buy, where it comes from, etc. I think this is important and I want to spread the word. In a non-flashy way, I would like to introduce my life as a Canadian expat living in somewhat rural Italy, actually. I live in a small town. It's called Chieti. And it's... Ooh. It's nestled between sea and mountains. And I think as much as I wouldn't want people to visit because I like that there are no tourists, I also think that Yeti needs and Abruzzo needs tourism, but healthy tourism, more deliberate tourism. Tourism is, can be quite unhealthy. Uh, so if you want to follow along with me, I think going forward in 2024, I will be sharing information, tips, etc. about leading a more intentional, I hate that word, ugh, leading a more in tuned existence. I don't feel like it has to be this big deal. I also think that making small changes in our lives should be attainable for everyone, regardless of income. It should be accessible for everyone. I truly believe that. And in the small ways that I will help, maybe, maybe it can be accessible for everyone. Yeah, we're gonna try this, see how it goes. Until then, here's some lovely little vignettes of my town. This is like a totally guilt-free zone. This is just me sharing the way I do things, perhaps in hopes of inspiring you to think about how you're conducting things in the world and you can make changes if you want or you don't have to really like it's not a pressure thing leading by example is always the way to go i've been thinking a lot these past few days about what this time of year means to me. One, one, I am trying really hard to eliminate the Christ aspect out of my holiday celebration. Um, I've managed pretty well this holiday season to not say Christmas and this has been pretty deliberate and intentional uh, on my part, mostly because I am not affiliated religiously. It's not done out of disrespect. It's actually, if anything, done in respect so that I'm not taking away Christian values 
that I literally don't believe in. I mean, sorry, I believe in the values. I don't believe in the shit that goes with it. Second, everything I gave to people this year, except for four or five kid gifts, those I bought because I wanted to get books uh, that were teaching English because they're all at a good age to prime them to learn the language. Other than those gifts that I bought, I made everything for people. I don't live in some dream world where materials to make things just magically grow on trees. Obviously it takes funding. It takes some money to buy ingredients, especially now that everything is so dang expensive. So I understand that. But I think that for less money, you can buy ingredients to make multiples of things, cookies, etc., which you can give to multiple people. You are saving money. So this holiday season, I think I made everything that I gave to my husband's family. For my husband's parents who literally don't need a thing, we just made them dinner. We bought the ingredients and we made them dinner. Not doable for everyone, but I think the gifting of experiences or things that are going to be used up. cemetery. I wanted to stop, but there were people. If you're new here, here's some information. If you know me, you know this story because I share it freely and often. About two years ago, I was walking home. I was talking to my dad on FaceTime, walking through the cemetery. I'm pretty sure they did not play the recording saying that the cemetery was closing because that thing's loud. And it's not like I couldn't hear anything. All right. Not sure what that is. Like part of a building or something? Yeah, it's part of a building. Ooh, that's, they have a lot of faith leaving that there. <laughs> I hope they don't leave it overnight. It will definitely get vandalized and tagged. I didn't hear the announcement, but I'm pretty sure there was no announcement of the closing. And I get to the other end and it's locked. It was locked. And if you know me, you know that I suffer from crippling, crippling claustrophobia. If I can't get out of a place, regardless of how big it is, I go into panic mode. 
I rushed back to the main gate because, believe it or not, this had happened to me before. <laughs> but when I went back to the main gate the first time, I think someone must have seen me on the camera and opened the gate for me. But this time, and it had literally just closed, but I don't think anyone was watching the camera or everyone had left. I was there, trapped in the cemetery with the sun going down slowly. And I was panicking, called my husband, he called the police and called someone who knew someone to get me out. And he had been really nice to my husband on the phone, but when he let me out, he turned into such a dick. He really was not very kind. I think because I was a woman and foreign, because I tried to explain that it was literally two minutes after the time it was supposed to close and <coughs> I think that was a bug. Oh! dick and then i walked home this way not through the cemetery and i wept i wept openly so much and then i got home i was alone i wept i wept so much stories <laughs>